this pamphlet. These rats are not going to live that long. And it says, with proper care. Yeah, jerks, it started with y'all. It started with y'all. Proper care. The hypocrisy. If you do the rabbit hole and you look at Petco and see how they treat their little bitty animals, the hypocrisy yes. of this. My name is Dawn. Welcome to Gulf Coast October. And I'm trying to do a video that I've been wanting to do for a while. And I keep scrapping it. And I'm overwhelmed with this whole topic. It's an icky, icky topic. And it's about why we will not even buy pet food or anything at Petco. A little bit of a thing about our rats and why, you know, I don't do videos exclusively about my rats usually. Um, and it's kind of sad because it's like people behaving badly and ego driven will actually, it overshoots the mark and it backfires. And it makes those of us who have had horrible experiences not want to speak up against the places like Petco because the radical people within the rat care community will come after those of us who have ever done this. So then we don't speak out and then the problem persists. So I don't even know if I'm going to make this video public, public, or if I'm just going to have it in with my rat videos. So if anybody ever looks at any of them that I, I can't even imagine how many I would still have public because I think I took them all. I think I deleted most of them. Um, you know, it's just anybody who has a good rat care channel, you are so brave. Like emiology, so brave. The Scudo Gourmet person, so brave. Um, and even uh, Pet Adventures. Now, that was back in the day. A lot of Pet Adventures, she had to turn everything off because, uh, I mean, her advice back in the day was actually good advice. But like, today, we know different. But it's very great for archives to say, hey, you know, a lot of us, we had rats and tanks back in the day, and, and things have changed so much. But not everybody's going to rush out and hop on the internet to learn things. Everybody's going to have to learn by experience, you know. Um, so, but we did have a horrible experience with Petco. When I was younger, all through my early 20s, I had mice or rats. When I, we started doing the husbandry thing with rats again, yeah, I didn't think too much of it. I was just like, well, we'll get a cage and get a couple of rats. And um, what's more complicated than that, actually, is we were at the pet store. I had been studying about it a little bit again, but not much. We were in the pet store, and there was two rats, and I was like, and they were just like, and I related to that. <laughs> so I was like, we'll take them both. And my kid was like, mom. And I was like, it's fine. And we had a bird cage, which we very quickly upgraded to a bigger cage and a bigger cage. And now we have a five foot cage. And we just love them. And you learn about them. You learn about their food. If you are doing the, uh, the Shumanite or Shunamite, I, I have no idea. Just uh, have you a container and just write on there, you know, how many scoops of the base mix and processed mm -hmm. grains and proteins and vegetables. And then you have it there and you can keep it there and you can have your dinner mix and you can even have a breakfast blend if you want to, if your rats get super bored like ours do. And then we have a separate one because <laughs> I'm a nerd that's for the upstairs snacking when they're upstairs. They're, they're all downstairs. They were up here all morning and I just got finished spot cleaning and I was like, I got to do this video. I've been avoiding doing this video with me whenever something hits me over the head in three different ways. I'm like, okay. So the first reason I decided to finally make myself do this video, I'm going to make it all the way to completion this time, um, is just because it's bugging me. It's weighing on my heart. And the more it weighs on my heart, it becomes an unresolved issue. And I'm angry that I don't want to do the video. And I only don't want to do the video because of some of the meaner people in the rat care community going after, I don't care if you come after me, people will see the comment and they've gotten their animal at a place like Petco because it's learn by experience. The best way for me to remember and not do something again is if I see something or somebody that I love being mistreated. That's it. That's all it takes. Now I learned. Now I can share these stories and then I can get shut down by the people that claim to love rats so much that sometimes the behavior comes out so sideways that it shuts down the people that are trying to say, yes, we, well, we agree with something, but I don't agree with the being mean part about it. Um, but so the, the one thing that happened was I, I, I couldn't stop thinking about it because there's this thing that happened, and I'm going to tell you all what it is. The second thing that... Uh, why it bothers me so bad. It, the only way that we can really get pet rats is through pet stores here. Um, I had a horrible experience with a breeder and I, it's this thing too where like people judge. So I gotta tell this story. 
Um, I had found a breeder and she seemed really nice on her page and we were talking. She wanted to see the cage. I said, okay, fine. Showed her the cage. She said, absolutely not. No way. Blah, blah, blah. And she went off on me. And this is one of the reasons I don't like showing my cages. She traumatized me, this lady. But the whole time that she's going off about my cage, I was like, wait a minute. I was judging her. I mean, her house was disgusting. Her house was disgusting. At least at our house, the rat cage is in the cleanest room in the house because it's in the kitchen. Um, and so, uh, what was the other? She judged me for the cage. I tell you, my cage has a thing over it and it's in the corner. But the reason why is because there's so much airflow in the kitchen. It's to protect the rats. But also, it works out really good because, like, uh, people always say male rat cages smell bad. The only time we ever smell anything is if we're right there when somebody's going to the bathroom. I mean, that's, you can, you can smell it in the, in the moment, you know, it's gross. Um, or, you know, when we have fresh um, cocoa substrate, because it smells very much like the tropical rainforest. If you've ever been in a very tropical climate, you open the soil in a forest, and it smells like, um, some people say chemicals. A lot of people are very offended by this odor. I think it smells delightful. It smells... Uh, you know, like the rainforest. I think it's nice. But uh, that's the only thing we ever smell. Um, and people have been at our house and they go, oh, I thought rats smelled. Yes, I do clean the litter box every day. can't believe this woman on this page got mad at me because I only soak my litter pans twice a week on Tuesdays and Thursdays. And she went off on me. So that, I was like, I'm leaving. <laughs> I'm blocking you. I'm deleting my comment. And I'm leaving this group because y'all are not in the fun at all. That's not helpful at all. Anyway, so it's the only places that we have to get our rats. And dealing with the breeders that I have talked to is very difficult. Um, I'm in the United States. And uh, it just seems like if I lived in England, it would just be a little bit nicer. Uh, they're more open to these types of diets. They're more open to natural feeding, uh, vegetables, blueberries, <laughs> and bugs, live critters, and all these kind of things. Then in the United States, it seems to be a lot more, they have to eat oxbow exclusively, and you have to have this and this and this. And, the, and instead of encouraging people to learn by doing, which I feel is more accepted in like England, in the United States, they don't allow people to learn by doing so much. There's a lot of this. You're gonna do this, I say otherwise I'm gonna make sure that you know how to feel on the right 10 paragraphs about everything I know. <laughs> it's just like, I don't know, it's just really annoying. And then nobody learns anything. Everybody's just mad. Um, it, it makes it hard because like, it's like, I wanna be like, look, I'm going to have to buy rats from you and you're gonna step up your game because otherwise I'm gonna be going in some places and shaking some people up. You know? We have to be allowed to tell our stories of these horrible experiences we've had with Petco so that maybe they will listen and quit getting their rats from these places. And their company does not care about small animals at all. Oh, okay, this was the other thing. So I actually have four things. This pamphlet right here is infuriating and it's a lie. And when I think about little kids reading this and it says average lifespan, it says it right on the paper. What does that say, people? Right on there it says lifespan. What does it say? Up to five years with proper care. Well, that's just obnoxious and rude, and that's a victim blaming right from the get-go. So you're going to have kids that are trying their dangdest to figure out how to be good pet owners. And if they get their rats from Petco, what's the point? Um, I've never had a rat from Petco where we live at that's lived more than I would say a year and a few months. They all die the same way. It is major respiratory failure no matter how clean your cage is. They get this chest rattle that it's like they have it from the day you get them. So what happened to us, we were in between vets. The vet that we needed to take them to, she was not there currently, but I was like, I didn't want to go back to her because every time we would get this antibiotic, the rats would go into neurological despair and they would die. And maybe there's not enough studies done on these types of snake feeder rats that are sold by Petco as pets with these flyers that are full of garbage. This stuff is not accurate, okay? This is all for their money, their pockets to get lined with money. This is not fair to people, especially young people, that are excited to have pet rats and they want to do everything they're supposed to do. And this is they tend to have that or they have chronic diarrhea that no antibiotic ever fixes. They're chronically on medication. It's just 
it becomes a devastating experience. And then whenever you just have your rat out, people are going to get really angry because they don't understand this, you know, rat actually lives, he plays, he runs, he has a good time, but he's got more porphyrin than, you know, or you can see it because he's a white rat. That's the other thing. If you have a white rat, people tend to be more judgmental. If your rat has porphyrin, that's actually normal and they can get it in their sleep. Ours tend to not have it. I think maybe that we have like moist substrate is the cocoa. I think because I do shield the cage from the direct air and it kind of bounces off the wall. It keeps it aerated. It's really nice. But yeah, so it just depends on the stuff, kind of stuff, but it's very much trial and error by learning. So you have these people saying this, which is a lie, and then you get around some of the rat care communities and hopefully you can find a nice one where there's not a lot of drama and there's just good information, helpful, instead of like, oh, I think I messed up, I did this. And the people going, oh my God, you did that? Are you stupid? I can't believe, like, the way people respond to me, it's just, no wonder our world is going the way it does. The other thing, um, we homeschool. Um, the question I presented, uh, this week we are just doing um, critical thinking, uh, but we do all kinds of stuff for all kinds of subjects. But this week, uh, one of the questions is, I said, I asked her, my child, what is a current ethical dilemma that you are aware of on a local level? And I said, present the dilemma, the perfect solution, the likelihood of what will actually happen, and how do you think we should deal with this? And, and, and my child did this entire paper on not supporting Petco. And I cried when I read this, and what will likely happen? My kid said nothing. I feel like I am the only person on the planet that cares about rats. And that's one of the things about this, is it can feel very isolating when we're aware of these things that are happening and we can't have a voice. And even if we do, we're just kind of getting attacked from both sides. You know, but we actually love these animals. And so I can't step foot into Petco ever again for multiple reasons, right? One is my heart is way too big and I want to rescue you. Always, if there's the last rat in the tank, I want to rescue the rat. Because I know I can bring this rat home and I'm not going to expect this rat to be a lover because he was the last rat. He's the fighter. He's the one that has escaped the last 19 times the people have dug in to get a rat. For whatever reason, that rat is going home with somebody. He's run and he's hit and he's terrified and he's a nervous mess, but he's a survivor. And so my heart cannot abandon that because I that's my you know that's a damn me to get too emotional but I can't physically go in there without wanting to rescue the animals the other thing is that's what had happened the last time it was like we'll never ever buy rats here again but for some reason I was letting other people convince me it was still ethical to buy food there <laughs> which absolutely makes zero sense to me today but I'm not trying to judge anybody else. I'm just sharing what happened to us. But they started carrying friendly farms for rats and for other animals. And had never seen it. Like I'd never picked a bag of it up and I was just like mesmerized. I was like, I'm going to go and look at this stuff. Well, there was one rat. And I was like, I can't. And he's just this little guy. His name, by the way, is Mortimer. And he's downstairs. But he's a nervous little thing. Of course, the people trying to get the rat couldn't get him. And they were like scaring him. And I was like. Can I, can I do this? Can I get this little guy? I get kind of traumatized when they're trying to catch them and they're not good at it. <laughs> so, um, but we got him and, but I will say they did put him in a smaller box, which was, I was so thankful for because those bigger boxes are not good for rats. They're, they get more scared and shook up on the way home. Uh, the smaller ones are better, especially if, and you get two. So yes, you could put two rats in a small thing for the car ride home. That's totally fine. Uh, you know, I knew he was nervous. Uh, we had him isolated for about a week, but he had this chest rattle. And I was like, Shh. In the meantime, I was looking everywhere like crazy for another baby rat so he could have a brother. Well, couldn't find one. So about three and a half weeks go by, and I'm in panic mode. He's still having to be isolated because uh, I'm just not sure he had that rattle. And I was trying to figure out what to do. And I was waiting for our vet to come back into town because she was out of town. I panicked and I we were at, went back to the pet store. We're just like, we'll just get him a brother here and I get there. And there's 20 rats in the tank. So it's like, oh my God. And I was like, okay. So just, uh, I said, I'll just put my hand in. I'll just take the first one that jumps in my hand. That's what I did. I was like, I'm out of here. I was like, ooh. And I was just sick after I walked out of there. They were from the same place. 
he had the same thing in his chest. And I was like, what is going on? So I, I call them back and I say, look, Petco, I said, I have both of these boys. Apparently they're both under warranty. Can they please go to the vet? And they said, absolutely. Bring them up, drop them off. And they did some paperwork with me. Whew, went over my head. I'm going to tell you what the paperwork is. And this is very unethical. The paperwork is you sell your pets back to them. So I didn't know that's what I was doing. And my teenager and I leave. And my, and my kid is like, Mom, 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 I think something bad just happened. Like something. And I, I was like, no, it'll be fine. They're going to see the vet. I couldn't sleep that night. I was like, something feels off. And my kid is like, Mom, we have got to go back and get the boys. And I was like, it. so it was distracting me, making it hard for me to think. But I couldn't stop thinking about it. So I got up and I Googled and I went down a rabbit hole. And I saw things I cannot unsee. And I was traumatized and terrified. And they explained on this one thing, I sold my pets back to them. That's what they do. They give you your money back. And so what can happen, they don't see the vet. They put them in the back room and they let them die. And then they'll say, oh, you're right. There was something wrong with them, but uh, they died, unfortunately. And then, um, and but we paid you back. We, we, we refunded you. So, and in that refund, there's an agreement that if something happens to the animals, they're not liable. So you have signed your animals away, your family. And I was paranoid. So I, I started praying. <laughs> I was like, give me the strength to not let on that I am on a mission. And I thought about recording conversations. But the reason why I decided not to do that when I went back into the store, why I scrapped that footage, is because some of the people that work there, uh, I've noticed people rotate out of pet stores quick. It tends to be they see what's really going on. They can't live with themselves. They have to get out of that situation. And so that's why the pet store people rotate. That's why you don't see them there for very long. A year tops tends to be. Same thing with me. I worked at a pet store when I was younger. I was traumatized and could never even step foot in that part of the mall. <laughs> Again, it is not a good job. And you see things and you can't unknow stuff. And you could go down rabbit holes and Google this stuff, how Petco treats their small animals. They don't do vet care. They don't do anything. But, so I prayed, I went up there the next morning, and I was like, yeah, you know what, um, I'm just going to take him to my vet. My vet was out of town. And I'm just going to take him, and it's fine. And, you know, I just didn't want in any way to let on at all that I was furious. Because what did they do with my rats? What did they do with my little boys? They put them in a box in the back room. No intentions of ever taking them to the vet. They said, well, we've been listening to them. They sound fine. I don't think my rats sound fine. I think that they sounded like they had respiratory distress. Um, and the one we were gave them the friendly stuff, the stuff, I can't think of what it's called. It's a homeopathic thing. It's fine. It began to use a drop. I mean, it's strong for rat. It's alcohol. It just gets them a little drunk. It's like Robitussin. They can't live on that stuff. Um, it's good in a pinch, but they can't live off of it. But what it did do, this thing, leaving the pet store with my rats, I got them. I was like, whew. Thank God you're safe. It forced us to find a vet that minute. I'm not going to trade him. I'm sorry, you guys. I'm never going to do that again. I'm so sorry. It's not your fault. We didn't abandon you. We love you. We were trying to help. We thought we were doing a good thing. Yes, my love. Yes, my love. Yes, my love. And that's Chopsley hanging out in the shade, and he's chowing down because... They, you know, they weren't going to let him eat anything. And I said, you know, that's how animals die. And it was so hard to not flip out. It was so hard to not. I just had to be real nice and be like, oh yeah, I'm just going to go and pick them up. And I'm going to keep them on their holistic stuff and make sure they can stay on their diet. It was just less stressful. I was doing that on the inside. I'm like, Mortimer, I know you're having a rough 24 hours. We're going to take you into the vet right now. She's going to see you and she's going to help you with camera love. So tired. I remember this vet we used to work with a long time ago that I forgot about because our town exploded with growth and the city built up around this little bitty vet's office that used to just be on a hill on a farmland area and now it's in the middle of this huge like Los Angeles looking city in the middle of Tennessee so we go in there how's your brother puppy huh I know Morty he's back there not feeling good they're gonna see you guys I love that they have rodents on the wall. And she was amazing. And um, she heard the rattle and it's like, 
there's not anything that can be done about that rattle. It's not a, a thing. I, anyway, the best I can come up with myself is it's a genetic thing. But did they file a report that these animals have these things? No. Um, and Chopsley, I think by now he should be have outgrown his baby diarrhea that they get sometimes when they eat too much, like blueberries or something. Uh, he hasn't outgrown it, and I'm convinced that's genetic from Petco as well. But, you know, they didn't have any intentions of letting my boys see a vet to fix anything. Because they know all this genetic stuff, it makes them sound like sick all the time. Literally, it's just like the pet owner, unless you just come to terms that's like, like how a human can have allergies all the time or... These animals from Petco chronically are going to have this. Petco. I'm not talking about another pet store with the word pet. I'm talking about Petco. P-E-T-C-O. They lied to me. They lie to everybody. This pamphlet. These rats are not going to live that long. And it says, with proper care. Yeah, jerks. It started with y'all. It started with y'all. Proper care. The hypocrisy. If you do the rabbit hole and you look at Petco and see how they treat their little bitty animals... The hypocrisy of this weird stuff in the rest of the flyer, but I'm out of time. Learn by doing an experience. Like this kind of stuff. It took me a long time before it occurred to me to just write it on the dang container. Now, I don't even ever have to think about it. It's right there. It's easy. I really do think it's a sad, sad thing that we are not encouraged to learn by doing, especially when most of the people that are very passionate in the rat care community are probably learned by doing neurotypes. Anyway, so why in the world? And the only thing to me that would say, I don't want other people learning about doing I want them to do what I tell them to do. That's ego. And I don't have any patience for that. So anyway, so, but rats are great, but, you know, it's just like really hard. And because I have our time finding any, you know, like even rat breeders near me, and let alone the one that I was willing to drive like eight hours away for, she judged me because I shouldn't even ask me, why do you have the cage there? It didn't occur to her ever that we could have a lot of wind that goes through that room. You know, but her house was disgusting. What was the other thing I saw? Oh, it, the lady that wouldn't let me get... She had um, red maple branches up against the cage. I could see it in one of her pictures. And I said, also, by the way, that's a red maple. Rats are not supposed to have that. Maple, R-E-D, red, R-E-D. It has three points on the leaf. Rats are not supposed to have that. So, of course, she won't listen to me. No. Anyway, just take care of you. Take care of your pets. Do the best you can. And learn from your mistakes. And other than that, just love your rats and enjoy them. Bye. Frankie, may I help you, sir? Hi, my love. Hi, my love. Can we say hi to your friends? Who's your friends? Can we say hi? You like being on the camera, don't you? That's a good boy. I love you. All this stuff everywhere that y'all get to destroy. Because it's morning time, huh? Because it's morning time. And this is Winterbell. This is our boy that's sick all the time because he came from Petco. All the time with him. Nobody else ever catches it. He just has it all the time. I forget what this diet's called. The shoot, shoot, shooty dooty. Um, I just got so mad. This is why I can't do this video. This is why this is so hard. No wonder. And the other thing is, in order for me to do this video and share this information, I have to tap into that own ego-driven part of myself, which feels yucky, which would also explain why I don't want to do this video about other areas in my life where I got to stay a little bit more ego-driven than this. Yeah.